Hello, my name is Liz Snyder. I'm the Assistant Dean of Students and Director of Student Involvement at Carthage College. While I would love to be with you in person today, I'm excited to take some time to share a little bit with you about the leadership model that we follow at Carthage College and how it can be a significant part of your college experience. Here at Carthage, we focus on leadership as a relational and ethical process of people working together, attempting to accomplish positive change. Hopefully, as you learn more about Carthage, or maybe you even already know now, you can see that this connects very well to our college's mission. We find that this is an important piece of conversation with students right out of um, their high school experience transitioning into college, or maybe you're coming to us from another uh, college or university. But either way, we think that this tells you a lot about what it means to be a student at Carthage and how this leadership model can influence what you're doing both in and outside the classroom. So we focus on the relational leadership model because it's really an aspirational model. Um, <clears throat> It's really focused on what your group has the potential to do, um, and the purpose of it is really focused on vision. So what is the long-term goal for your group, your team, your floor if you're living in our residential halls? Um, and one of the most important things that I really want to emphasize throughout this presentation is that it's not position-driven. Uh, so you will at Carthage have the opportunity to hold a number of different leadership positions if that's of interest to you, potentially being a member of an executive board of a student organization, maybe you participate in committee work uh, through your academic department, maybe you're a member of student government or serve as a resident assistant. Uh, but just because you have that position doesn't mean you're an effective leader. And just because you're not in a position um, that you have a specific title that may indicate leadership doesn't mean that you can't display these skills and have the influence of a leader within your group. So I really like to remember the relational leadership model um, by these tenants, which I'll show to you a couple of different ways, um, recognizing that we have folks who learn in a number of different ways. So the key pieces of the relational leadership model are that it's inclusive, purposeful, empowering, ethical, and process-oriented. And we'll talk about these one-on-one, -on -one, but I think it's a really important and easy way to remember um, by looking at the red letters that hopefully you can see, um, which are IPEEP. So once again, inclusive, purposeful, empowering, ethical, and process-oriented. Talking about inclusive leadership, um, this is probably something that uh, you've been able to see either in action or potentially lacking as you look at the things that have been happening in our world over the last couple of months. Um, leadership has been called into question about a lot of different things that are happening, um, be it the economy, the world response to COVID-19, um, race relations in America. So there are a lot of different ways um, that you've seen a call for inclusive leadership, regardless of your political affiliation, um, or your level of engagement in politics at all. Um, and an important part of it being inclusive is that it's representative of diversity in views, approaches, and um, just overall lens that you look at the world. Um, so we wanna make sure that within a team or a group, um, be it a class project group that you're working on, um, the folks that you live with on your residential hall floor or just a, you know the friends that you'll meet along the way. We want to look at the strengths and talents of each individual member of the team um, and recognize that those are diverse and that they're coming based off of their diverse life experiences um, and combining those strengths and talents so that you can work together toward whatever your goal or mission is um, and help each other to accomplish it. So moving on to the first piece. We're a little out of order here. Um, empowering. Um, we want to make sure that in any situation that you're a part of a group, um, that you not only as an individual claim ownership, um, but that you are showing your level of involvement and expecting the same and holding others in the group accountable. Um, we want to make sure that the conditions within the group promote full involve, involvement, so reducing barriers. Um, and one of the things that may be really interesting and kind of a shift from leadership that you've seen before uh, is thinking about potential barriers to participation due to access to technology, um, knowing that a lot of the experiences that we're going to be offering are virtual. Um, I think the other really important piece of this is sharing power. So there's no one person within your organization or within your group that has ultimate power or ultimate decision making when it comes to this leadership model. We really want to work toward building consensus, uh, which is an important thing. And I think it also reinforces 
the statement that I made before about not necessarily emphasizing the importance of holding a specific leadership position or having a leadership title. Um, because even if you are the president or the chairperson of your club, that doesn't mean that you have ultimate decision making in this model. Ethical. Um, so hopefully this goes without saying, but we want to make sure that there's a values orientation to the work that we're doing and the way that we are approaching um, anything that we're working on in a group or as an individual. Um, most people expect leaders to do the right thing, um, but we want to make sure that you as an individual expect yourself to do the right thing and that there's a level of accountability within groups and organizations when that doesn't happen. Um, we want to think about the higher purpose, so either the mission of our institution or the mission of your individual organization, um, and making sure that all that we're doing is reflective of a continued striving to achieving that mission or displaying to others what that mission actually is. Process oriented. Did we lose the other P? Um, so this is just focusing on the things that you know that you do um, to, to be your group. Um, so what are the things that are important to your day-to-day -day operations? And some of those things can be really tactical, um, even down to like, how do you handle tasks? So what's the best way of communicating the status of things? And you can even think of this um, within your friend group. What's your kind of common um, method of communication? Do you have a group chat? Um, do you group FaceTime regularly, like what, is, what does that look like and how does that influence how you all stay in communication and work to support one another? Um, and that it's an intentional thing. Um, so do you figure out ways within your study group to schedule a time where you're all gonna connect weekly or bi-weekly instead of just happening to bump into each other? Those accidental interactions are great and really can help to bolster uh, group dynamic and relationships, which are an important piece of leadership. Um, but you wanna make sure that there are an in intentional and structured things that happen. Um, so to summarize all of this, I think the last line really hits at home is how is just as important as what. So what are you doing and what are you hoping to accomplish, but how are you getting there? Um, the process really is important because it offers opportunities for you to reaffirm the mission and also make sure that everyone within the group understands how they're contributing to it and what value they bring to the team. Oh, there's the last piece. So I guess we're going... Um, you can always remember I peep, but I guess we're going I E E E P P. Um, sorry about that. Um, purposeful, I think, is my favorite one when we think about um, leadership and how it connects to mission. Um, you want to be intentional in finding a common ground with others. Um, that's how you build relationships. That's how you build community. Um, even if it's something as silly as knowing that you binged the same um, Netflix series during this quarantine, or if it's something that's really um, much more structured as far as your faith background, political ideation, those types of things. Finding anything in common um, that you have with others and building a common ground is really an important piece of forming the relationships that will allow the leadership dynamic to occur. Um, this allows you to articulate a common vision and make sure that you're um, working in line with those. Um, so you're always focused on your ultimate purpose. Um, and sometimes that can just be as simple as having fun or building community or making friends, um, but you want to make sure that you're clear in that um, and working toward that shared accomplishment. Um, if you even think about building a friendship as the kind of ultimate purpose, um, it's a little bit more difficult um, when that, that um, accomplish, end game accomplishment of having a solid friendship isn't a shared goal. So you want to make sure that you can use your um, communication skills and intuition to understand um, that everyone's on the same page and that you're working toward a common goal. So I'm um, glad we found the last P even though we're a little out of order um, and we'll continue talking about kind of what does this mean and what you can do. So the relational leader is one that really emphasizes the importance of teamwork and I want to place that one first even though that's not how it appears on this slide. Um, because if you don't emphasize teamwork, the rest of the challenge, the things are going to be really challenging here for you. So creating commitment through participation is obviously a key one. Um, if people aren't feeling like they have things to do or that they're contributing to the team in some way, they're not going to necessarily be as committed or feel compelled to show up or even feel compelled to, um, you know, share the mission with others. 
politics can be a big one within groups. I mean, regardless of if it's a structured group, like a study group or a team project, um, or if it's just your friend group. As we mentioned before, um, diverse uh, points of view are really important when it comes to the team dynamic, but that can also sometimes cause um, points of tension. So you want to make sure there's space and structure for a dialogue and for working through those things so that everybody has an opportunity to have their voice heard and share their point of view. Um, and works within the existing structure and culture. Um, you don't want to come in and totally disrupt um, what you observe to be an existing culture. Obviously, there is space for change and space for progress, and we want to encourage that. Um, but making sure that you're not coming in and saying, you know, every other group in our in our class for their team project is going to meet weekly, but we're only going to meet once before our project is due and just do it all in one day. Um, I mean, I don't recommend that because that sounds like a stressful way to get your project done, but also um, you want to make sure that you're kind of figuring out a way to flow that's um, within reason representative of the larger culture and structure of the institution. So what do you do now? And I want to once again drive home um, that the uh, important piece of this is that you don't have to be in a leadership position, like a structured, recognized leadership position to display relational leadership or to grow in your own leadership skills. Um, you can learn about yourself and also learn about others in your group. Um, pay particular attention to the things that you're seeing people do well um, and reinforce that. Whether you're the president or not, you can notice that someone did a really good job um, and call that out to the group or call that out to them individually. Everyone loves to be recognized for the things that they contribute. The other thing that you can do is um, look and see if maybe you notice that someone's struggling and offer to help or offer um, ways that they could maybe approach a project in a different way. Um, that hopefully is representative of the next tenet of finding ways to make sure everyone's involved. Um, if you're in a group of 10 and it's just two or three people that are doing the uh, large amount of work and everybody else is just kind of hanging around, it provides a lot of opportunity for them to start feeling disconnected. Um, and not only is that not a great experience for them, but the group is then missing out on um, talents and contributions that those individuals could make. Um, Determine agreed upon values and establish your common purpose and goals. Hopefully that goes without saying um, because you want to make sure that what you're working toward is very clear, uh, but you can't, um, you know, work together to achieve the goals without establishing what they are in a clear and common way. Um, reflection and listening are two really important things, both in your um, individual life and also in the group. So Take some time to reflect internally or if you're a journaler or whatever works best for you, but also have structured ways within the group that you can talk about the successes and failures um, and so you can make note of what you can do to improve or change for the future. Um, and as always, um, community is so important. Make sure you're helping each other out and don't be concerned about asking for support. Um, we want to make sure that people are feeling well, you know, connected and that they have places to go if they do need help or if they just need someone to help them kind of troubleshoot something that they're facing. So I hope that this has been insightful for you as you think about um, what your Carthage experience will look like as you come in. Um, and I'd love to talk to you more about your leadership experience, either um, growing as a leader in an actual leadership, you know, structured position, or just learning more about yourself. Because at any point in your life, either as a college student in your residential hall, within your family, within your um, faith community, within your living community at home, you're going to either face people who are um, in structured leadership positions or take on leadership within a group um, because anywhere there is community, there will be some leadership din dynamic at play. So it's just a really important um, individual skill to, to continue to try and hone. Um, if you have questions or want to learn more or want to talk uh, specifically about ways that we can support you in your leadership development, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Office of Student Involvement. Um, we'd love to connect with you there. So thank you so much for your attention, and I wish you well as you start your Carthage journey. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in person.